And sometimes we can put too much uh, ink on. And if you're having problems with it tracking or if you're printing white and then on top of that you're printing other colors uh, and you're having problems with uh, wet trap and the ink is not trapping, you could very well be putting down too much ink, okay? So you really have to look at the quality of what you're doing there and see what's happening. Another thing to look for is treat level. Okay? Now, uh, ink has an affinity for itself. It wants to stay together. And then the film, uh, uh, if, it doesn't ha if it has a low surface energy, the ink wants to stay uh, you know, attracted to itself more than it wants to go down to the film. So you're going to have almost a beading effect of the, of the ink trying to formulate droplets while it's in the wet state because it has a greater affinity for itself than it does for the substrate. So you want to uh, always have on hand a, a, a way of measuring the dyeing level, okay? The dyeing level. The treat level is measured in, measured in dyes. And dyes is a way, a measure, a way of measuring surface energy. All right? And generally speaking, generally speaking, although this is something you want to investigate closely, you want something in the neighborhood of uh, really no, on the low side, 38 dimes. That's, that's on the lowest side usually. And then on the higher side, you know, you probably want to keep it to about 41 dimes, all right? So as far as your surface energy and dime levels, you're probably looking at something in the neighborhood of 38 to 41 dimes, but that's up to you to, to confirm and to incorporate as part of your QC program if you're not already doing that. And it's best to check it before and after the run. You want to make sure that the, that the substrate has enough treat level before the run. And after the run, you want to make sure that you ran a roll with treat on it. Because let me tell you something. I've run thousands of pounds with no treat on it. And, and, you, and that is, there's nothing that will uh, make your heart sink faster than that. And make you think you're getting ready to lose your job either. <laughs> so, so you better be careful. You want to make sure you uh, check your treat level, okay? So, but what does that, what, that, what does that do, okay? <clears throat> if this is a substrate, okay, and you have a dot of ink on it, okay, this is ink and that's your substrate, okay, if you have a dot of ink on it, the greater the surface energy, the more that dot is going to actually want to flatten out and, uh, and lay on that substrate okay and, and and thus what it does is the adjacent drops that are actually spreading in part because of the dime level or the higher surface energy of the film makes it so that they bridge nicely and, and lay down better so take a look at your tree level okay now let's say that uh, you, you know you go through all this troubleshooting stuff and you just you know you, you're at a loss here if you have enough print stations and the situation lends itself to this, and that could be the because you're printing on what you said natural film, which is clear film, um, uh, clear and colorless, because you're printing on that, it's possible that you're doing uh, inside uh, inside inside printing, and therefore you're putting your colors down first and then your whites on top of that. Uh, you know, I don't know, and so I, I don't know what your situation is, but you can sometimes run two consecutive print stations with white, uh, with lower volumes that, uh, and, and just good quality lay down, um, that uh, when those two uh, impressions superimpose and hit on top of each other, you have a very nice opaque solid white. So that's another uh, option, and what we call it here in the U.S. is two bumps or a double double bump we call it two bumps of ink okay so that's another thing to try now um, one thing I want to show you 
is uh, I really got to hand it uh, to the folks at uh, at Harper Corporation and uh, for uh, for the amount of, of of information that they put up for analog scrolls. If you go to www dot Harper Image dot com. If you go there and then you uh, you're gonna see the corporation and other stuff and click on analog scroll somewhere there and start searching lots of literature on analog scrolls. You'll be uh, impressed and surprised. There's a lot of great stuff that you need to really study closely and analyze and start to learn the math and the and the things behind it. There's a gold mine in there. If you guys go there and download a lot of the literature and stuff and all this stuff about cell walls and uh, analogs volume and specifying analogs role and stuff like that, I mean, you've got to go there, okay? Well, one among the stuff that they have there is... Uh, sorry about that, but, you know, this is, the, this is real world stuff here, and so I got a cell phone. What can I tell you? All right. Uh, the, uh, okay, well, um, this here, they have these things called, uh, volume charts, okay? Just dig around in there and find it. I'm not going to tell you where it is. Just go in there and find it. And, uh, but, you see now, I'm just going to take one of these charts, okay? This happens to be the, uh, XLT or something, digital transfer, okay? But what it shows you something is, it, it shows you, you know, lines per inch or the, the number, of, the line count in one direction, and then this is the volume. And that's all I'm going to tell you about. But if you study this real good, it's going to give you uh, some tremendous insights in, in an ca encapsulated form that you can keep with you. For example, you'll note that the range of volumes... What it, what it tells you that you have this narrow range here versus, versus this broad range here is that as your cell, uh, your line count increases, the range of volumes that you can specify is, is narrower in terms of absolute. Per, per, perhaps uh, as a percent it's the same, but in terms of absolute volume, the range is less. So it's represented by this narrower band here of volumes versus this wider band here of volume. Whereas, uh, as a percentage, perhaps it's the same, but as an absolute value, it's significantly greater. For example, over here you have 11 versus 18, a spread of 7, whereas you here you have uh, something like 0.6 to 1.3. It's a spread of 0.7. It's, it's, it's nothing. So, so things like that. I'm going to leave it up to you to study this kind of stuff and uh, really, really absorb it. This is the kind of stuff that gives you the insights you need to be able to troubleshoot on the spot and understand what's going on. Now let me refer to your email again. Oh, here it is. All right, so, okay. Well, you know, uh, another thing is that uh, there's, there, there's all kinds of possible uh, causes for pinholing. And you really have to just kind of focus on what is happening where the rubber meets the road, where the plate meets the surface of the su substrate. Contemplate all of the things there that are happening. And finally, what I will say, one more thing, is on our bulletin board at um, flexorexchange.com slash form, there is a thread uh, in, in the uh, press room uh, forum called uh, Plate Cell Patterning. It's a, a very, very popular thread. And I invite you to, 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 to read through that thread. And uh, there's some things developing with this whole plate cell patterning concept where uh, a plate actually has imaged onto it a shallow cell to kind of emulate an analog scroll, and um, that might shed some light. Some of the aspects of the discussion there might shed a little bit of insight too. Okay, so I hope that these things I can't you know provide you the magic pill, but 
These are some of the things to look at, and hopefully some of the folks on the bulletin board will post replies because I'm going to take your question and post it up there and embed this video on the bulletin board too, okay? So thanks, Happy New Year, and uh, please feel free to ask anything else you'd like. Thanks.